What up, friends? How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? As promised, this is going to be Cowboy Sunday. And with that said, I have a very special treat. <clears throat> There's a couple of cowboy poets, uh, Don Edwards and, and Waddy Mitchell, uh, been around the cowboy poetry circuits for years. And uh, it's, it's not mainstream. I'm sure there's not a lot of you people have ever even heard about this, even as a genre. Uh, but it's something that I think we need to preserve here in our in our lives. So with that said, I'm going to put this on uh, Don Edwards and Waddy Mitchell. And in this case, I think they're going to talk about um, uh, the Bronco Twister's Prayer, which is sort of an interesting, uh, interesting deal here. So kids, if you would, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, ring the bell. And with that said, let's, uh, let's listen to Don and Waddy. Never thought it'd come to this, would you, Waddy? Huh? 26 years of buckaroo, right? Now he's on the stage of the Scott Theater in Fort Worth, Texas. It's a hell of a lot business. easier digging post holes part. Right. Yeah. Pays about the same, though, don't it? Yeah, about. <laughs> Unfortunately, I could not find a live version of this, so. I mean, I tell you, it does. I this is a great, great old poem from my very favorite cowboy poet. His name is Bruce Giscadden. And I think maybe we'll all relate to this one a little bit. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was just a little graveyard on the rolling foothill plains. It was bleached by sun in summer, swept by winter snows and rains. Their little bunch of settlers had gathered on an autumn day around a homemade lumber coffin with their last respects to pay. Weary men who'd wrung their living from this hard and arid land. And beside them stood their women, faded wives with toil-worn hands. But among us was one figure who was wiry straight and trim. Everyone among us knew him was a Bronco Twister, Jim. Just a bunch of hardened muscle tempered with a savage grit. He had the reputation of a man who'd never quit. He had helped to big the coffin and he helped to dig the grave. His instincts must have told him how he's supposed to behave. Well, we didn't have a preacher. The crowd was mighty slim, just two women with weak voices sang an old-time funeral hymn. That was all we had for service. The old wife was sobbing there for her husband of a lifetime, laid away without a prayer. Then she saw the Bronco Twister, and she walked right up to him put one trembling arm around him and said, Pray, please, won't you, Jim? And you could see his figure straighten and a look of quick surprise shoot across his swarthy features in his hard, daredevil eyes. He could handle any Bronco, and he never dodged a fight. It is the first time anybody would ever seen his face turn white. But he took his large sombrero off his rough and shaggy head. How I wish I could remember what that Bronco Peeler said. No, he wasn't educated on the range his youth was spent, but the maker of creation knew exactly what he meant. He looked over towards the mountains where the drifting shadows played. Silence must have reigned in heaven when they heard the way Jim prayed. 
Years have passed since that small funeral in that lonely graveyard lot, but it gave us all a memory and a lot of food for thought. So we stood beside this coffin, some freshly broken sod with a reckless bronco breaker talking heart to heart with God. When the prayer had finally ended and the grave had all been filled on his half unbroken pony, he rode back towards the hills and we just stood there and led him. We watched him right away, for no words could ever thank him. There's nothing we could say. Since we gathered at the graveyard, it's been nearly 50 years with their joys and with their sorrows, with their hopes, with their fears. But I hope when I'm finished and they've laid me with the dead, some cowboy says a prayer above me like that Bronco Peter said. sad you know it's a little sad a little touching um but there's some truth to that you know there's there's when you get out west as i spent a lot of time uh, living out in montana and alaska <clears throat> did a lot of hunting out in colorado and wyoming and a lot of time around horses uh, i've always been a bit of a cowboy um I can I can just picture one of these guys that uh, you know works out of the in the range and coming in and being at that funeral and 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 how natural it would be for him just to have a conversation with God like he was talking to his best bud. Um, Something I don't think a lot of people today would, would be able to do, but interesting, interesting thing. This, this sort of phenomena with this cowboy poetry stuff, I, I don't know if it's as big now as what it had been. I, I don't think so. I've kind of gotten away from it now that I've gotten back to Ohio, but um, sure, uh, sure gives you something to think about, don't it? I think so anyway. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you're enjoying Cowboy Sunday. We've got some good music coming along here in just a moment. So give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. I'll have more for you here in a little bit. Thanks. <laughs> 